In these problems, we're looking at an alarm system that uses a four-digit code, and we want to find the number of possible codes under a certain set of circumstances. <clears throat> so let's look at the first one. In the first one, it says that the digits may be repeated. And what I like to do in this type of situation is make four blanks. And what I'm doing is I'm leaving a space for each of the four digits in the code. So if it was a six digit code, then I'd make six blanks. And what I'll do is in the blanks, I'm going to put not what um, number the code would be, we don't know what it is, but how many possibilities there are for that particular digit. And you'll see that in some problems, um, these will be different values and sometimes they'll be the same. So in this case, because the digits may be repeated, we start off with, first of all, there are 10 possibilities. And how do I know there are 10 possibilities? Well, I'm looking at this alarm system in particular, and you can count if you start with 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. You're going to see that there are 10 different digits there. A lot of times people think 9 because they think 1 through 9, but 0 counts as well. And now I will put down how many possibilities there are the second time. Because we can repeat, there's going to be 10 the second time, and then 10 the third time, and 10 the fourth time. So when I go and multiply those four numbers together, I get 10,000. And that is what you get there. Next, look, let's look at what will happen if the digits may not be repeated. So again, there's four digits in the code. So I'll make my four blanks. And the first digit can be anything from 0 through 9, so there's 10 possibilities there again. Now the second digit can be anything except for whatever it was that we got for the first one, so there are only 9 possibilities now. And then the next one, there'll be 8. And then the next one, there'll be 7. And so when I multiply 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, I get 5,040. So you can see by just not allowing the digits to be repeated, we almost cut the number of possibilities in half, which is kind of interesting and maybe a little unexpected. So that's the solution to that part of the problem. Let's take a look at another one. Now for this one, we see that the first digit must be even, and the digits may not be repeated. So, again, we have four digits, so four blanks, and I know the first digit must be even, so that could be a 0, a 2, a 4, a 6, or an 8, so five possibilities there. Now, for the next digit, the next digit can be anything other than whatever it was we got the first time. So maybe we had a 2. Who knows? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, how many other possibilities are there? It could be a 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. So there are 9 possibilities there. So this will be, oops. It doesn't really matter, but there you go, 9. And now the next one can be anything except for whatever the first two were. So since we started out with 10, we're taking away 2, that leaves us with 8. And then the last one, there are 7 possibilities. So when I multiply this all together, I get 2,520. And there you go. Let's take a look at one more. Now this next one is actually based on something that happened to me while I was out with a friend. And we happened to notice that in this particular restaurant where we were, there was an alarm system and four of the digits, 
four of the keys were very smudgy. And the rest of them had obviously never been touched ever. And so clearly those four buttons were the digits in the code. So the only question is, what is the order? And also, can any of the digits be repeated? So here's what we used as our logic. When I looked at the alarm system, I said, well, I know this is the same alarm system that someone else who I know has, and they had four digits in their code. So I'm assuming in this situation that, again, we're dealing with a four-digit code, and so I'm going to have my four possible values here. Now, what happens? It's not 10 possibilities now. There's only four of the buttons that have been touched. So for the first value, that would be four. So four possible um, different digits that could be the, the first digit in the code. Now, for the next one, because they have touched four of the buttons, obviously frequently, each of them, because they're all dirty, um, I'm assuming that that means that all of the digits have to be different because if we were pressing the, say, the one button twice, then that would mean we'd only need to be pressing two of the other buttons and not three. So I'm assuming that I'm not using values more than once. And so then I go three for the second possibility, there's two for the third, and just one for the last. And when I multiply those all together, you can see that there's only 24 possibilities. So by not cleaning the buttons on there, what they did was they took the number of possibilities from 10,000, which is what we had the first time when there was there were repeats allowed, and brought it down to 24. So that's not very secure. So good thing to keep in mind when you have an alarm system, make sure you clean off those buttons. And that's your multiplication rule.